In this lesson, we are going to be looking at solving quadratic functions by factoring. This is section 5.5 in the Algebra 2 book. When you solve a quadratic function, we first have to have everything on one side of the equation and have it set equal to zero. Then we're going to factor this using the methods that we learned already about factoring and set the factors equal to zero so that we can actually solve for x. In our first example here, we have x squared plus 3x minus 4 equals 0. We're going to factor this using the trinomial method we learned, where we think about the end number. Here, that's a negative 4. And I want to think about things that multiply to make that number negative 4, and what would add up to make a positive 3. Well, the special numbers for those are x plus 4 and x minus 1. Now, I take each one of those factors. I set them equal to 0, and I solve for x. On the first factor, I would subtract 4 in order to solve for x. That gives me x equals negative 4. On the second factor, I would add 1 to solve for x, and that gives me x equals 1. So the two answers to this problem are x equals negative 4 and x equals 1. Try these next two. They are going to factor using the perfect squared method. Pause the video until you're ready. For the first problem, we're going to factor these perfect squares into x plus 8 and x minus 8. Both of those are still set equal to 0, so I take each one, I set it equal to 0, and I solve for x. On the first factor, I would subtract 8 in order to solve for x, giving me x equals negative 8. On the second factor, I would add 8, giving me x equals 8. So the two answers to this problem are x equals negative 8 and x equals 8. The second problem on this slide still uses the perfect square method. 4x squared breaks apart into 2x and 2x. Negative 9 breaks apart into positive 3 and negative 3. So my factors are 2x plus 3 and 2x minus 3. Now we set them equal to 0, and we're going to solve for x. On the first factor, I would begin by subtracting 3 to the right, and then I would divide by 2. Negative 3 divided by 2 is negative 1.5. If you like fractions better, you can leave it as the fraction negative 3 over 2, or the decimal version is what I have here, negative 1.5. On the second factor, I would begin by adding 3 to the right, and now divide by 2. 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. So you can have the fraction version, 3 over 2, or the decimal version, 1.5. But the two answers to this problem are negative 1.5 and positive 1.5. Next we look at what happens when we don't have the equation set equal to 0 as we start. On the first problem, we have the equation set equal to 15. So our very first step would be to subtract that 15 over to the left. So our equation will now be 2x squared plus x minus 15 equals 0. We're ready to factor. We're going to be factoring this problem using the bad math method that we learned for factoring harder trinomials. We started with a 2x squared, so I want to start each parentheses with a 2x. Now remember this is not correct. We're going to go back at the very end and fix it. Multiply your first and your last numbers together. 2 times negative 15 is negative 30 and make a list of things that multiply together to make negative 30. Here are the numbers that make negative 30. Pick the pair that adds up to positive 1 because positive 1 is our middle number. The pair that adds up to positive 1 is the negative 5 and the positive 6. So our factors would be 2x minus 5 and 2x plus 6. Don't forget to go back and reduce one of your factors. 2x plus 6 is the factor that reduces. When I divide each term by 2, it reduces down to x plus 3. So my factors are 2x minus 5 and x plus 3. Now we take each factor, we set it equal to 0, and we solve for x. On the first factor, we begin by adding 5 to the right, and then last we divide by 2. x equals 2.5 or if you like the fraction, you can say 5 over 2 and leave it with that. On the second factor, we're going to subtract 3, and we get that x equals negative 3. So the two answers to this problem are 2.5 and negative 3. On the next problem, we're going to begin by subtracting 24x 
to the left side. So 3x squared minus 24x equals 0 is where we begin. Now we're ready to factor and we're going to be using here the greatest common factor method. The greatest common factor of both terms is 3x and so I'm going to take a 3x and put it out in front of a parenthesis. I look at each term and see what's left over. When I take my first term 3x squared and I divide it by 3x I have x left over when I take negative 24x and divide it by 3x, I have negative 8 left over. So x minus 8 is left over inside the parentheses. Take each factor, set them equal to 0, and solve for x. On the first factor, to solve for x, I'm going to divide by 3. x equals 0 is the answer to that part. On the second factor, I'm going to solve for x by adding 8. x equals 8 is the answer to that part. The final answers are x equals 0 and x equals 8. Try these next two, pause the video, and we'll go over them when we're ready. On the first problem, we're going to begin by taking out the greatest common factor, which here is 3x. When I take out a 3x from both terms, I have left over x minus 6 left inside the parentheses. Take each factor set it equal to 0 so we can solve for x. On the first factor I would solve for x by dividing by 3. x equals 0 is my answer. On the second factor I would solve for x by adding 6. x equals 6 is my answer to that one. So 0 and 6 are the answers to this problem. On the second problem I would have to begin by subtracting 14 to the left side. Remember, we have to have our equation set equal to zero before we start our factoring. This is going to use the trinomial method. Think about things that multiply together to make negative 14. Well, that could be 1 and negative 14, negative 1 and positive 14, 2 and negative 5, or negative 2 and positive 5. 7, I'm sorry, 2 and negative 7, or negative 2 and positive 7. We want to pick the pair that adds up to negative 5. That would be the 2 and the negative 7. So our factors are going to be x minus 7 and x plus 2. Take each factor, set them equal to 0, and solve for x. On the first one, we would add 7 to solve for x, giving us x equals 7. On the second one, we would subtract 2 to solve for x, giving us x equals negative 2. So the answers to this last problem are 7 and negative 2.